Welcome once again to our uh, summer courses information session for the Outward Bound Canada West Coast Expeditions. Um, a few housekeeping things before we get started. As I mentioned, if you have any questions at any point during the presentation um, or the conversation, please add them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Thank you to everyone who sent in some questions ahead of time when you were registering. We're gonna start off with those and we've got some answers already for you. Um, but once we finish those questions that were asked ahead of time, we'll make sure to get to the ones that come up during the presentation. Uh, just a reminder that this session is being recorded and a link will be shared with everyone who registered for it via email uh, tomorrow, along with some more information on how you can contact us if you have any questions that come up after the presentation. So as many of you probably know, Outward Bound Canada is a national uh, charity. Uh, we specialize in providing high impact outdoor education experiences for youth in Canada. Uh, we've been around for over 50 years and we've had the pleasure of serving over 200,000 participants. Um, and we have the pleasure of speaking with you this evening. A few of our team members are on the call to answer your questions, both from our admissions teams and also from our West Coast program team. Um, so I will let them get started and introduce themselves. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. I am also Sarah, and uh, I am an admissions coordinator here at Outward Bound Canada. I've been with Outward Bound for about two years now, and I work a little bit in the backgrounds, getting you folks prepped for the trip and uh, talking to you about anything that you may need while we're out on course. Uh, my background is uh, in marina management and outdoor education. I went to an overnight summer camp uh, for 15 years before I moved out west. I'm originally from Toronto, and now I live out here in the beautiful Victoria, BC on Vancouver Island, and I'm excited to answer any questions that you have about our West Coast courses coming up. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Alan, and I am the BC Wilderness Manager for our programs based on Vancouver Island. So on the West Coast, those will be our sea kayaking open enrollment programs uh, that your youth might be on for this summer. I've been with Outward Bound since 2009 and uh, now in a role that's a little bit more in the background logistics and setting up all of the stuff for the expeditions uh, that happen here. Hey everyone, my name is Laurie. Um, I am the Vancouver program manager, so I uh, deal mostly with Vancouver and the lower mainland, which stretches into the Fraser Valley and beyond, and it can go all the way up uh, beyond Lillooet. Um, so we have a big scope here. Um, I I work with um, with the open enrollment programs. Yeah, I, I do. We're doing a lot of the hiring. I do a lot of the training, and I do a lot of the um, working with schools and community groups and speaking to parents and trying to figure out who's coming on our courses, how we can support them and best get them on, and which wool layers we need to bring to them at the trailheads to get the course going. Um, yeah, I've been with Outward Bound since 2017 um, in a couple of different roles. I was in Toronto, um, in Ontario for a while as well with their program. And before that, the last 10 years before that, I've been working in various uh, roles in the outdoor industry, instructing and um, educating all over, all over Canada and a little bit back in Europe. Um, and so I can answer all things Vancouver and Lower Mainland questions, specifically talking about our seven day backpacking courses. Nice to meet you all. Uh, so I'd like to just begin by acknowledging that the uh, wilderness base here in Courtney, uh, where a number of the courses will be beginning, uh, is on the unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Station. Um, so to begin, uh, we want to talk about what to expect on your uh, Outward Bound expedition. So, you know, starting from when you arrive with the group, um, get dropped off, uh, you're going to be meeting the instructors and the peers, uh, meeting the other participants, everyone that's going to be going along with you, and then um, getting into what we call duffel shuffle. So this is our chance to make sure that Everyone has what they need, um, hasn't forgotten, maybe an important pair of socks, um, a rain jacket, whatever it might be. Uh, and then everything that you brought is appropriate for the expedition. Um, this is when you also get issued any of the gear that Outward Bound is going to provide. Uh, so sleeping bag, 
uh, sleeping mat uh, for the kayaking expeditions, dry bags, hiking programs, backpacks, um, that sort of thing. Uh, shortly after that, next day, generally going to be heading out, getting onto the water or onto the trail, um, whichever program you're on. Um, and then right into the activity. So uh, there might be some challenges to overcome. Definitely, you know, it's first time paddling, hiking, uh, lots of new things to learn, uh, working with your group of peers and figuring out how everything's going to go through the expedition. Uh, at some point during your course, you're going to end up on your, your solo. Uh, so some courses that might be an afternoon, some courses it might be up to 48 hours, uh, depending on the length of the course. Um, so it's not a survival challenge. It's not about having to figure out how to survive out there, but it's that time for reflection uh, and your instructors will be um, going over the necessary skills that you might need before that. The instructors check in on the students throughout the solo, uh, but it is a time of uh, of just being um, alone and uh, and reflecting on the program. And then throughout the program as well, the instructors will be uh, transferring initiative responsive group as they uh, grow and learn new skills and are able to take that on. Uh, and then before you know, uh, it's the end of the course and time to say goodbye to your new group of uh, friends. So for a network bound course, we work on kind of three, fa three phases for the process. Uh, so we have immersion, that's where the students are really learning from the instructors. So lots of lots of information being put out there, lots of lessons, how to set up your tent, uh, how to pack kayak, how to pack your backpack, um, setting up shelter, fire, cooking, all those skills that you're gonna need for that program. Uh, we'll then move into Maine and the students will start to take on more responsibility through there. So instructors are still helping, moving that along, uh, providing lessons, but as the students gain those skills, they can take that, that responsibility. Um, and then we'll move into final. And so final uh, you know, is different for each program, but the instructors are taking that larger step back and allowing the students to really lead and make a lot of the decisions for that program and at that point. So a day in the life of an outward bound course. Uh, so depending on the goal and objective for the day, but you know, getting up each morning and you're gonna have to break down camp. Uh, so packing up sleeping bags, taking down tents. Um, you might need a fire in the morning. Uh, there's gonna be a group that's gonna be making the meal, the breakfast for everyone, uh, planning out for the day, checking the weather, seeing if it's appropriate to, to move camp for the day. Um, and then uh, getting out on the water or on the trailhead or out onto the trail. So uh, after that, you know, you're learning, practicing many um, kayak rescues, kayak skills. So learning your forward strokes, uh, how to navigate off of the chart, um, but then also how we're going to work together. Make sure that the entire group is moving through the day. And then if you're uh, on the backpacking course, um, how to pack your pack, how to get across the stream, all those little skills that you're going to need as you go. Uh, and then once you get to camp for the night, it's kind of the reverse. So it's setting up camp each night, finding in a kitchen, building that, um, building a fire, collecting wood, and then there'll be a reflection for the day. Uh, kind of see where those learnings were, uh, how the day went for everyone and where everyone is feeling. Um, how, how they've done through the day. And then what do I need to bring on my course? Uh, Outward Bound is gonna supply a lot of the, the or is gonna supply the technical equipment. Um, so what we want you to bring is just your personal clothing, footwear, 
Uh, there's a few odds and ends on the packing list that you'll be supplied with, um, but things like tents, sleeping bags, uh, your cup bowl, spoon, that type of thing is all supplied by Outward Bound. Um, and you know, we talked about before in the duffel shuffle, we'll go through and check all those things that people have brought to make sure that they're going to stay warm, dry, and, and comfortable on the, as comfortable as they can on the course. Um, but as it says here, if you have any specific questions about anything on the packing list, you can reach out uh, to my uh, self for any kayaking courses. Uh, email is on the screen there. Or for any backpacking courses on the West Coast, that would be for Lori. Pick up and drop off, always kind of uh, a big part of the course. So if you're sea kayaking, that's going to be happening in uh, Courtney. Comox Valley. So we'll do pickups from the Comox Airport and also the Driftwood Mall um, with more kind of information coming for uh, specifics on that with you as you sign up for the course and as we get closer. Um, Laurie, if you want to talk about Vancouver uh, there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, just for Vancouver, as you can see on the map here, the first pickup will be at midday, 12 noon at the Vancouver International Airport. And then the second pickup will be just on the SkyTrain uh, line there. You can see it's at the Olympic Village uh, SkyTrain station. Um, so kind of close to downtown um, on the route right out as we're going, uh, we're heading north. So it's uh, right on the way there to get out of the city quickly. So airport first, and then the Olympic Village SkyTrain station, there's a parking lot right there. And I believe we have it pinned exactly in the travel plans there as to where that will meet, where you'll meet. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alan and Lori, for all of those details. Um, I'm going to be zooming back a little bit just to let you folks know uh, what kind of funding we have available here at Outward Bound. Uh, we have three different streams of funding, and if you have any questions about what you may be eligible for uh, or anything like that, the uh, admissions at outwardbound.ca email is the best place to go. One of our admissions coordinators will get back to you very shortly about uh, the funding that you might be eligible for. I'll just go into a bit of an overview of each one. Uh, so the first stream is called the Youth Access Fund, and this is a bursary that we use to help subsidize uh, course fees. This can be anywhere from a partial or a full grant, uh, and there is an application process that's attached to it, and you can find out any details about that on our website at the link that's at the bottom left of the screen right there. Um, Something to note about the Youth Access Fund is that we have had an overwhelming amount of applications this year, so we're currently taking a wait list. That being said, I really encourage you to get on the wait list in case any funds do come available for you. Uh, it's, it's definitely good to be on there just in case something happens. Uh, the next stream of funding that we have available is for BIPOC youth leaders. Uh, this is a full scholarship, so it covers the full cost of the course fees. Uh, it does not include travel costs, though. And this scholarship is for any youth that identifies as Black, Indigenous, or a person of color and who is looking to insert more leadership skills into their life and kind of show their community and themselves uh, that they can be a leader um, in their life. And then the last stream of funding that we have is for youth of veterans. So this is a full scholarship, again, covering all course fees for any youth that have a parent or guardian that are currently in the armed forces or have served in the Canadian Armed Forces. And again, any questions can be sent to admissions at outwardbound.ca. I'd also like to highlight a couple of other uh, funding opportunities as well that we're offering at Outward Bound. Uh, these two opportunities are in Ontario and the Rocky Mountains, but they are fully funded. So no course fee is associated with these courses. And um, they this has been made possible by the very generous donations of the Maddie Project. And if you're not familiar with the Maddie Project, I highly suggest you look them up and see what really awesome work they're doing with the community is. But essentially, these courses are specific for students that uh, maybe want to build their confidence and their self-esteem and uh, meet new peers that have maybe gone through similar experiences uh, with them. Things like they may have experienced bullying in the past or uh, are just having some issues building their confidence. This is a really safe space that our instructors create to uh, both in a team and an individual setting, build that self-esteem, build that confidence and uh, foster resiliency in the face of any challenges that they'll come up against. 
All right, Alan or Lori, would you like to take on this slide? Yep, happy to. Sure. So, um, oh. go ahead, Alan. Uh, just talking about our group size. So, for the sea kayaking programs, uh, we are 10 participants per program uh, up to. Uh, and then with, within that, we will arrange for the sleeping um, in tents with, uh, with other participants. And a lot of times that will change around uh, each day, night, depending on, uh, on people's comforts with that. Um, and then you will also have your instructors there, as well as your peers uh, along for the entire way to, to support you. Yeah, so I can talk a little bit to this. Um, and the simple answer is that um, there isn't a huge amount of difference between the West Coast trips and the Rocky Mountain backpacking trips. Um, the main difference is obviously location um, and the mountains themselves and the courses themselves, like Alan talked about, the process and the way the network bound course is structured is generally we follow that same model throughout all of our courses, but the location will be different. So if and the time frame that we do run pro, run these backpacking programs. So Vancouver and the Lower Mainland, our program is seven days, and we don't run any backpacking courses longer than that. So that could be a consideration if this is more local to you. Maybe a uh, Vancouver or the West Coast backpacking program might be a starting block or a stepping stone. And then if thinking about a longer course, maybe stepping into a Rockies course, maybe next year or the years after, thinking about that progression. Um, but at a, as a baseline. The mountains are the mountains, and we're gonna we're gonna run similar style courses up up in uh, depending based on where we are. Um, and if you have any specific questions on differences, I'm happy to answer those. But as a baseline, um, the backpacking courses are very similar. I can speak to this slide a little bit. Um, so on our courses, we will be sending out an iPhone that does have uh, no SIM card. And so all of the texting and internet features are disabled, but we want to be able to capture some really great quality uh, photos and videos for you back at home and for memories for the students. Um, so in the admissions process, we do have a form that is asking your permission uh, for photo consent. And that is both so that we can uh, make sure that uh, your child is included in any of the photos that we take. And also um, we may post them on social media or on our website, and we want to make sure you're okay with that. But uh, if the answer is yes, then we will collect all of the photos that we've taken on the course. And um, we will be sending out an email with a link to a Flickr album. And Flickr is an open platform for photo sharing. Uh, so once you get that link, you'll be sent to the specific album uh, of the course. But you can also take a look at the other albums that have been posted uh, of other courses in the area. So if you're signed up for more than one course, that one link will get you uh, to see all the photos from all of your courses. Awesome. Thank you, Lori, Alan, and Sarah for tackling the questions that we've got ahead of time. Um, I don't see any questions just yet in the Q&A box or in the chat, but I'm sure that does not mean that folks don't have them and are eager, eagerly typing away. Um, so while I give everyone a chance to start doing that um, and to get their questions out, um, Sarah, maybe you can speak a little bit to uh, how fit a, part, a student would have to be to go on our courses. Does that differ between a sea kayaking course and a backpacking course? Great question, Sarah. Um, so first and foremost, we are not looking for, you know, elite level athletes and people that run marathons for fun or anything like that. Uh, we do ask that the participants do incorporate movement into their everyday life. Uh, so something like maybe doing some organized sports a couple times a week, going on walks or hikes with your family or your friends, things like that. Uh, essentially, we want to ensure that uh, your body is ready to take on the challenge of being up and active for a really good portion of the day, especially if you're coming straight out of school and a school environment, sitting down and doing coursework and homework and stuff like that. Um, so we just ask that you are incorporating some kind of movement that uh, that you enjoy into your day to day. 
In terms of the difference between sea kayaking and hiking, I would say that hiking is our most challenging uh, activity that we do offer, mostly because not only are we going to be uh, walking as our main method of transportation, we're also going to be having some uh, backpacks on our back that contains everything that we'll need for the week that you'll be joining us. Uh, so usually our packs are anywhere between 30 and 40 pounds, so you need to be able to um, even going slow, uh, walking up a hill with that much weight on your back. Um, and there will be a bit of an adjustment period uh, on the first few days of any course because you're probably doing an activity you're maybe not used to doing. Uh, but as long as you have the motivation to be there and the mentality of, you know, I can get through this, then uh, you can achieve pretty much everything. Great. Got a few questions flowing in now. Uh, the first one's for Lori. So this person is curious to know uh, which trail will be used for our backpacking expedition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we're going to be going up into the Duffy Lake area and we're going to be having a little bit of a little bit of a romp around an area called Mount Roar and Mount Marriott or the Marriott Basin. Um, so those trails, there's lot you can find lots of information about them online. They're they're well used trails. Um, and they're incredibly beautiful, but the, the plan is to be, it's not going to be a loop hike. It's going to be an inn to Mount Roar and spending one or two nights in that area in the basin beside the lake there. And then it'll be uh, hiking down a little bit, then up further into the Marriott Basin, and then it'll be back down. So it's not a full loop. It's going to be an inn to Roar, down, and then up to the Marriott Basin here, and then spend a few days there, and then all the way back and out. Um, so it's Mount Roar and Marriott Basin, or Mount Marriott. But when you hear Mount Marriott, we're not peaking Mount Marriott. That's the big objective. It's the Marriott Basin that we'll be spending time in. Great. Lots of people want to know about our backpacking courses. So here's another one for you, Lori. How big are the backpacks? In pounds, I think this person wants to know. I think it's liters, Sarah. Yeah, we would measure, we would measure in liters. Um, so our backpacks are, we have a few different sizes, but as a general rule, they're around 70 to 80 liters. 80 liters is fairly standard for uh, for an expedition like this. Um, and they come in various sizes, regardless of them being 80 liters, they might have a different frame size for a shorter body type or a longer body type, kind of small all the way up to large frames or adjustable frames to make sure that they're fitting all types of bodies. So 80 liters as a standard between between uh, 65 to 80, but 80 liters gives us lots of room for snacks. <laughs> There's a reason why you folks are fielding these questions, um, and it's not me, uh, but we do have another one here. This one, Sarah, you could probably take. Um, this person's son is born in October 2009, so he's not quite yet 14, but could he join any of our uh, courses that are for start at age 14? Great question. Yeah. So for anybody that is not within uh, kind of the designated age bracket, when you're trying to make a registration through our registration portal, it will automatically block you. Uh, so that will be uh, a bit of a, a hint to contact us at admissions at outwardbound.ca. And um, typically when we have someone that's outside the age range, we will uh, ask you a few questions about your youth and kind of how they would feel uh, in terms of comfort level with older peers. So for example, our backpacking courses, um, they are 14 to 16. Uh, so our question would be to your youth, how comfortable would you be if the majority of the participants were 16 on the trip and you are 13 turning 14? Uh, another thing we'd be asking you is, what is your uh, youth maturity level? Would they be fitting in with 16-year-olds? Would they be able to keep up both you know, emotionally and mentally? Or uh, should we wait for another year to see if there's a course that fits more into where they are developmentally? Um, it's both kind of a question for you. How comfortable are you? Do you want to do this? And for us, you know, where are they at within their development and their maturity? Um, but we do encourage you to ask that question and start that conversation with us. So emailing us at admissions at outwardbound.ca is the best place to start. Another backpacking question for you, Lori. Um, how many hours a day would the group roughly spend hiking? Yeah, that's a great question. And the answer is it depends on it depends on the group and it depends on the day. I would say a safe bet is anywhere between four hours as a standard day and eight hours might be a bit of a push day. 
Um, it's not uncommon to have one bigger day somewhere near the end of the course, maybe. But I'd say in general, it's safe to assume that you will be hiking for around four to five hours um, in general. Some days it might be two, two hours. Um, it depends on the route that you have planned, the the way that the group is functioning and what their capabilities are. Um, so between those time frames, I would say, very dependent on a few different things. Alan, a question is coming for you finally. <laughs> what kind of footwear is appropriate for a sea kayaking trip? Yeah, always uh, a question that comes up for sea kayaking. Um, so the footwear that you're going to want to bring for this for that program is one pair of shoes that can get wet and one pair of shoes that can be dry for in camp. So in camp, a uh, pair of running shoes, uh, something like that is great uh, for the on water. Um, something that you don't mind getting wet uh, and can spend all day in. What we don't want is like a, a flip-flop kind of shoe uh, or anything that can come off easily. So we are looking for a closed-toed um, shoe that can go in the water. Uh, generally, I recommend Crocs or something in that kind of style uh, with the uh, strap around the back. They stay on really well and don't mind getting wet. Uh, one of the other shoes that you want to avoid is kind of the uh, swim shoe. Uh, so like those really light kind of weight, um, not much of a sole, just really um, meant for kind of around a pool uh, shoes. They don't really do your feet all that great. Uh, out on. Awesome. Another question here for you, Alan. Are there any hiking opportunities during a kayaking trip? Yeah, depending on the uh, the program and the length, uh, definitely some opportunities for hiking. A lot of cases, it will be more of a um, coastal hike, so exploring some of the beaches, uh, some of the, uh, say, the 21-day July and August courses. Um, they'll have a bit more of a hike to sometimes get to our surf beach, uh, but those are all hikes that you can do uh, with just that running shoe. You don't need to have uh, hiking boots for those programs. Great. Um, don't have any more questions just yet. I'm sure there's more coming in shortly with folks wanting to know about both our backpacking and hiking um, expeditions. Um, Sarah, maybe while we wait for folks to type away, is there anything um, that students and, and parents should be thinking about as they apply for um, one of our trips? What would you say is the most important thing um, that students think about when they're address assessing whether they should join an Outward Bound Canada expedition this summer? For sure. Great question, Sarah. Thanks. Um, we look for uh, kind of three main things um, when we are chatting with students and seeing uh, if the program is right for them. The first one that is ultimately the most important factor in uh, your youth joining a trip is, are they motivated? Do they want to come on this experience? Um, if we have a youth join us that feels, you know, forced or that they didn't have a choice in the matter, they won't be able to get out of the program uh, what we want them to. Essentially, you put in what you get out of these experiences. And if there's someone that doesn't want to be there, not only does it um, not have a great impact on them uh, on a personal level, but it also would affect the group as well. And that's kind of the last thing that we want. So if your youth uh, maybe sees this as a challenge and they're a little bit nervous, that's totally normal, but we do want them to be motivated because that will push them through any challenges that they encounter while they're in the field. Uh, the second thing that we also look for is that uh, even if you're going through something in your life, any kind of mental or physical health challenge, that you do have the appropriate coping strategies already in place before coming out onto one of our trips. Our instructors are wonderful, very professional and, you know, qualified people. One thing they are not are therapists. So as long as uh, you have an understanding of, you know, your needs in the field and uh, you're able to uh, advocate for yourself and for your needs, that's awesome. Uh, but we need you to have those established kind of coping strategies already set before you join us on the trip. And the last thing uh, that we've already touched on is just be a little bit active in your day-to-day -day life. Incorporate that movement. Uh, and it's never really too late to start, 
you know, if you're, you're lacking a little bit incorporating movement on the day to day, especially during the winter, I'm not a winter sports person, so I totally get that. Um, but you know, spring has sprung in a lot of places, especially here out on the West. So if you want to work on that, we also have some resources, uh, that you can chat with your doctor about, about getting more active in preparation for the trip as well. Great. Thank you. Um, so we've talked a bit about sea kayaking and backpacking, but this person would like to know what other activities do we get to do or play during the trips? Yeah, so I mean, the, the predominant activity or mode of transportation is going to be your backpacking and, and your sea kayaking. Um, we do have um, those two, the uh, July and August 21 day trips where it's scheduled that you're going to have the couple days of surfing. Um, and then outside of that, uh, it really depends on the group and what they're kind of looking to do. So, um, I said, you know, if it's a kayaking trip, maybe finding some opportunity to go for a hike, to explore a different area, uh, lots of games, lots of activities within that group, um, and just, you know, some general exploring of the, of the area as well. Great. Uh, another question, how much food is brought on the trip and can we bring our own snacks? That's such a common question. Um, and we, I, I would say more than enough food always being the person that is cleaning out the fridge at the end of each trip, we, there's always a lot of food left. Um, we, we do a really good job and, and Sarah can speak more to this if we need to, but in regards to making sure that we're accommodating dietary or anything specific that anybody needs. As long as it's on the paperwork, we know about it and we'll make sure that we can accommodate those specific requirements. Um, and in regards to bringing your own snacks, we would, we would ask that you don't for a few reasons. First being, we know exactly who has uh, what in regards to uh, either dietary or allergies. And so when somebody brings something on trip and they weren't aware of a peanut allergy, um, that gets a little bit dangerous for us and it means we can, we're no longer managing that. So we'd ask that we, uh, we would ask that people don't bring their own snacks for that reason. Second reason is that um, people tend to bring sneak snacks into their tents and in their coat pockets and then it's a little bit of an attractant for animals. Um, so that's what a third reason, a second reason. And the third reason um, is that it means that you won't be eating all the snacks that we provided and then we're just all carrying a lot of snacks that don't get eaten. So we always bring more than enough food um, and as long as we know beforehand what your specific requirements might be, we can accommodate those. And Alan and Sarah, if you have anything else to say, jump in. I just add that, you know, we know our demographic. <laughs> we know that you are all growing and developing and eating lots more food than uh, maybe we would as adults. So we we pack that with with that in mind. Great. Uh, so at the end of a tra of the travel day and camp is set up, are there activities for the youth or is it free time to explore until dark? Yeah, so there'll be a mixture of this. Uh, so sometimes uh, the instructors will take an opportunity getting into camp to go over specific lessons. Um, so it might be navigation, it might be, you know, some, some skills for tarps. Uh, there might be some leadership or environmental uh, lessons that they they present to the youth during that time. There's also definitely time for free, free time to explore. Uh, and the instructors will always put some type of uh, guidelines around that in terms of where students can go explore, how far away from camp, um, and, uh, and how they need to communicate that with the, uh, with the instructors before they go. Great. Um, another question in the chat. We just arrived to Canada and are new to the country and the culture. Do you think there'd be any challenge for my kid to join? Sarah, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, I would say no, not at all. We are open and welcome to anybody uh, joining our trips, regardless of, you know, if you just moved here or you were born here. I'll also say that we do welcome students from all over the world as well on our trips. Uh, I know this year we have multiple students from the States. We have a few from Germany, from France, from the UK, uh, and some from Australia. So we have folks coming in 
from all places around the world. And we also, you know, one of our intentional uh, points of this course is that we welcome everybody as they are and as they come, and we have lots to learn from each other. I'll maybe just add in there that um, we encourage folks to come alone. Um, they're more than welcome to come with friends if they really want to, but we really value people coming um, solo. So um, everyone's gonna be kind of meeting everyone else for the first time. So I don't think there'll be any barriers there. Uh, another question that came in via the Q&A box, should we bring our own bear spray? No, it's not necessary to bring your own bear spray at all. We have we have that covered from our side and we have a, we have a pretty good structure in place for that. So uh, we, we'd say, don't please don't bring your bear spray. That's okay. Another question here is in the chat uh, around hygiene. How do kids get clean after long hiking days? Do they heat up water for a sponge bath? Is it is it a, a lake wash situation? Also, what about washing laundry on, on some of the longer trips? Is there an issue with stinky socks? Yeah, all the questions about staying clean. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, in regards to hiking, um, there are so many ways to um, look after your own hygiene and everybody has a bit of a different system. Things that we definitely do incorporate every day are uh, hot or warm water hand washing um, before meals. Um, that's very simple by, you know, heating up water with our stoves. And we have things called dromedaries, which are um, uh, water kind of, they're essentially a water bladder that we can hang from a tree or hang from whatever. You can just hold it up and that's uh, like a little tap almost. And we can put warm water, hot water in that and have a, have a soap, um, have a soap set up there with even a little scrubby brush to, to clean your hands if you need that. Um, and then obviously hand sanitizer and making sure that we have a solid system around meal times um, is set the same as toothbrushing. Um, every instructor does something different, whether it's a toothbrush, toothbrush dance party or some sort of structure to make sure that everyone's keeping up with their hygiene. It's also something that we do make sure that our, as party, part of our duty of care, the instructors do keep an eye and make sure that they are uh, monitoring and making sure that they're kind of seeing that people are looking after themselves and re in regards to hygiene there. Um, we, okay, so water, sponge bath, lake washes. Yeah, there's there's definitely opportunities for people to do a bit of a wash um, in bodies of water if they want in fresh water. We're not necessarily swimming up in the mountains. That's something, again, that we do manage well. Um, but when you find fresh water, it's okay to do a bit of a wash down, get your feet in there and wash your armpits, whatever you need to. Um, I can't speak to the longer trips in regards to uh, laundry or washing, but there's most certainly times where um, you can dip your socks and, you know, wring them out and dry them out on your pack. And But they're typically, you'd be surprised how long you can go without actually needing to do any laundry. It's not typical to launder anything on trip. Um, and yeah, that's maybe as much as I'd say about that. Um, we have good structures in place um, and we're all in the same boat. We're all smelling great together. Alan, anything to add from a longer course perspective? Uh, no, very similar. Um, I think, you know, especially on the ocean, they take, find those times to be able to, uh, to kind of get a splash in the water, get cleaned up. Um, instructors will set up time to be able to offer a bit of an opportunity to go, um, take some water aside, get a little bit of a clean. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, everyone will kind of be in that same boat as Laurie said. And uh, it's more about just the packing and and how the instructors will go through the students and how they manage which clothes and uh, and training through through that through the trip, keeping a nice pair of socks for to put on uh, halfway through. Something else I'll also add is that uh, they will have the opportunity to shower before they come home. We will not send them home to you stinky, mostly because if they're flying, that would be a problem. Uh, so they will have the opportunity to shower before they get home, although they will probably need a deeper scrub when they get there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> good thing to note. I'm sure many parents are thinking, I don't know if I want my um, child in my nice brand new washed car when they smell like 21 days of sea kayaking and surfing. <laughs> um, we still have a few more minutes left if there aren't any more questions that folks want to pop either in the chat or the Q&A, we're happy to answer them. 
Um, maybe while we wait for, for a couple people to type some more questions on the topic of hygiene, um, I'm sure many people are wondering because this is a question we often get, how do you go the, to the bathroom when you're in the back country? Yeah, it's very dependent on where you are um, and which mode of travel you're in. Some, some sites, maybe you get to a more established site and they might have an outhouse or they might have a, in Ontario, they're called thunder boxes, you know, little like little green thrones that you'll sit on and they have a little bit of privacy and they're dealt with uh, and maybe whoever by whichever service is managing that site. Um, in the mountains, in the back country, we're certainly not seeing too many of those um, especially where we'll be going for uh, the Vancouver program. Uh, it's a process of teaching youth how to how to poop and how to pee in the woods and in the backcountry. And that mostly looks like digging holes and um, the leave no trace ethics behind that, which our instructors are incredibly well versed on. Um, and it's a liberating thing to be able to do, to, to be able to feel comfortable and know that you can just do that anywhere. Not anywhere. You can do that in the appropriate places um, in regards to not contaminating your water sources and... And uh, and leaving a leaving a trace there. So, yeah, I hope that answers that. So we've got a question that came in via the Q and A, and they're asking, can you confirm participants are sixteen to nineteen years old for the backpacking trips? Lori, do you happen to know off the top of your head what the ages are? You may not. I, I, do. Actually, I actually don't. Yes, Sarah, you go for it. I haven't seen the paperwork yet. For sure. Yeah. So we are running two seven day West Coast backpacking courses. One is for participants that are 14 to 16. And then another, a different week that is for participants that are 16 to 19. Uh, so there are two with two different age brackets with two different dates as well. Sarah to the rescue. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I could have answered that. I thought you meant like specific ages in the in the in each group, what age everyone is. I didn't know nope. they were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you did, Lori. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't see any more questions popping up. Um, we do have if, if probably could take two or three more if you have any. So pop them there. Um. Oh, and just like that one appears. Any courses for age thirteen? So uh, our wilderness trips begin at 14. Um, so if, like I said, your student is below 14, we can have a conversation depending on their suitability and their maturity for the course. In Toronto, we do run a day program uh, starting at 12 years old if you're in the Toronto area and you're interested in that. But for all of our wilderness courses, they start at 14 years old. Awesome. Um, so as I mentioned, we will be sending around a link to the recording after this session for uh, you to watch again if you missed any answers to your questions or if folks couldn't join us on the call today. Uh, there'll also be some more information on how you can get in touch with us if you have any additional questions. Um, perhaps as you go through the admissions process, things might pop up and we're always um, glad to give you answers. Um, but yeah, thank you again for joining us this evening. Thank you to Alan, Lori, and Sarah for answering all of those lovely questions from folks. And we hope that we will get to see um, parents at drop-off and youth on courses this summer. So have a, have a great one. <laughs>